As a child, I loved music. I loved listening to music. And I grew up in a small farming community and where we were blessed with uh, tremendous music teachers, particularly one lady who taught music from second grade through high school, all the way through 12. And she instilled a love of music in me that uh, made everything else happen. It all began with the music. After studying piano for a number of years, starting at age seven, I was very fascinated by the small pipe organ in my church. I didn't know anything about it, but I was wanted to know more about it. And it was an interest that was both mechanical and musical, and which naturally led into this. So I started taking organ lessons at age 14. Through high school I studied with an organ professor at a Methodist college about 50 miles away from home which led to going to um, a couple universities to get a performance degree in organ. But all through high school I played in churches in town, actually two at once, the Presbyterian and the Methodist church. During college, I was assistant organist to my organ professor at a large church in Lawrence, Kansas. I did go into organ building because I started it in college, but it was always based in being a musician, it really didn't mean anything to me if I didn't have the music. I came to, actually came to Swarthmore Church to visit with a friend of mine, um, Pat Tewilliger, who was from my hometown, and she had married a gentleman who was a, a native of my hometown who lived here in Swarthmore. And in 2000, I visited them, and she brought me to church here. No idea whatsoever I would ever become a part of this church. I moved here later that summer to work with another gentleman in organ building, and at the time we were working on the organ at Holy Trinity Lutheran down the street uh, at, in Wallingford. I got a call, the pastor came to me who was the husband of one of the associate pastors here and he said, you want a church job? And I said, yes, I want a church job. And he said, my wife's church is looking for an organist. So I called Bill Yates, came by the church, he said, have a look at the organ. He was, and he said, would you play a week from Sunday? And I did. And uh, he called me after church and said, would you be our organist? Obviously I knew there was something very wrong because it sounded like Niagara Falls when you walked it, when you turned it on. There were so many wind leaks. The instrument had been greatly altered over the years in an attempt to improve it and there were improvements made. 
um, but there were always problems. However, I knew that I could do nothing about the organ per se at the time, but there was such an incredible synergy here in worship between the staff and the congregation that worked in a way that I've never found previously. So I did anything and everything that I wanted to do on this organ out of will, which I think any good musician will do. There are about 40 ranks and pipes, approximately 2,400 pipes altogether. Statistically, the organ was, the original organ was built in 1922, and uh, it went through various changes with additional new pipe work in 1966 then in 1978, and then some other work was done a little bit later. With this project, we've ended up with completely new mechanism, except for the blower. Uh, approximately 50% new pipe work, totally designed for this building. There's approximately 10% of the pipe work comes from the original organ and that includes the 16-foot open wood which is a stop that no doubt to replace those 12 pipes today would cost many times more than the old organ did originally. Some stops have as many as from low C, which is pipe number one, up to high C, which is pipe number 61, because a keyboard has 61 notes on it, might have pipes from three different stops in order to create the new sound we wanted to create. So while things definitely have been recycled into the new organ, many of them are in, used in completely new ways. This church is all about worship. Worship centers this church. Um, there were people who said, how can we spend this money on ourselves? But the bottom line always was that worship is central to this congregation. And without worship, this congregation cannot go out and minister to people in the way it does. And it is truly one of the most vital churches in which I've ever been involved.
I've spent now 42 years in organ building. Most of that time I've been able to have a church job. The last two or three years have been pretty intense and so I ultimately had to give up a very good church job in order to finish these projects. And that's where I want to return now, knowing that this is really a fitting conclusion. That's not to say that I won't be doing some other organ work, but not on a grand scale because uh, this has been so satisfying to create an organ that really truly does fill a space without ass assaulting you over the head. about an organ of any design that's done well is that it really becomes a living, breathing entity of its own. And that's the whole idea. As the scripture let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And that's what it's all about. And nothing really could be more satisfying. And for me, nothing could be more satisfying than for that to happen at this church. <laughs>